pelvic fractures. Classification of pelvic fractures. There are two classifications for pelvic fracture. The first one by Young and Burgess. The second one by Dr. Tyle. And the whole idea of the classification is by looking at the first initial x-ray, and of course you correlate that with the clinical picture of the patient, you will be able to decide if it is a complicated injury or not complicated. Is it going to be a lethal injury that requires a lot of blood and a lot of resuscitation and the patient may die from that injury? Or is it a simple and not a complex injury where we can walk the patient? And also it can decide how the patient could die can die from head injury or you can die from pelvic bleed. Can also decide if the patient needs surgery, what kind of surgery, or the patient will need no surgery. Young Burgess classification. There are three types lateral compression, anteroposterior compression, and vertical shear. The Young and Burgess classification is based on the mechanism and the stability of the pelvis. It can tell you if the patient will need a lot of blood or not. The lateral compression, that will be an internal rotation force to the pelvis. So you start with the symbol and it gets complicated. The symbol will be an impacted ala and maybe the pubic rami will have transverse or oblique fractures. The best example of lateral compression is the crescent fracture, and that is considered type 2. If the force does not involve the bone for the crescent fracture, it is going to involve the posterior tension band ligaments. The fracture will be unstable to internal rotation. So you just need to focus on type 2 will be the crescent fracture. The one before type 1 will be a little dent in the ala. The one after that type 3 will be a lot more than crescent fracture. In type 3 you will have lateral compression fracture on one side and anteroposterior compression on the other side. So one of the iliac crest will be in internal rotation and the other side will be in external rotation. It is a rollover injury or it's called when swept pelvis. Lateral compression 1 and 2. If the patient die, they will die from head injury. Lateral compression type 3 probably will have a high incidence of bowel injury. Then you got the anteroposterior compression. There will be external force to one side of the pelvis or to both sides. Or you may have direct impact on the pelvis or very aggressive forcible abductions of the legs. The first thing you remember that the iliac bones or the pelvis will be externally rotated. The symphysis pubis could be open or could be fracture of the pubic rami, vertical fractures. If you open the symphysis pubis, it will be less than 2.5 centimeter opening because type 1 is small, it's insignificant. You're not going to do surgery in type 1. Because it did not open a lot, the ligaments are still holding and it is rotationally and vertically stable. Type 2, the symphysis pubis will be opened and the sacrospinous and sacrotuberous ligaments will be injured. In type 2, the symphysis pubis will be opened more than 2.5 centimeters and the anterior sacroiliac joint ligaments will be injured. So the pelvis becomes rotationally unstable, but vertically stable. Why is the pelvis 
in APC type 2 vertically stable. It is vertically stable because the posterior cycloiliac ligaments are not injured. The only way that it will become vertically unstable is when there is a rupture of the posterior sacroiliac joint ligaments. This is the important type for open book fracture, type 3. And if you rupture these posterior ligaments, the pelvis becomes unstable rotationally and vertically. In fact, all the ligaments are gone and the pelvis is totally unstable. The anteroposterior compression type 3 is associated with the highest blood transfusion requirements and shock. How about vertical shear? All ligaments are disrupted and it is rotationally and vertically unstable. In the vertical shear fracture, the patient will also lose a lot of blood. Tile classification is based on the stability of the pelvis and not the mechanism. So there are type A, type B, and type C. Type A is stable avulsions such as anterior superior iliac spine that will involve the sartorius and the anterior inferior iliac spine that will involve the rectus femoris. The iliac wing fracture and transverse sacral fracture are also included in tile classification type A. An avulsion fracture of part of the sacrum can be a sign of instability. However, transverse fracture of the sacrum is a stable injury. Type B is rotationally unstable but vertically stable. Type B can be an open book injury with external rotation or it can be lateral compression injury with internal rotation. B2 lateral compression injury and internal rotation. That internal rotation can occur because of fracture of the anterior ring through the ipsilateral rami or through the contralateral rami and that's called bucket handle injury. This injury can also be bilateral. Type C is rotationally and vertically unstable. So what will cause death of the patient? Shock at presentation and major blood transfusion within the first 24 hours. Patient is older than 60 years old or if you have an open fracture of the pelvis, or the patient will have an increased ISS score. In general, if the leg is externally rotated clinically and the x-ray shows an open buck, especially if it shows an open buck type three, the patient could die from bleeding. This patient with the open buck needs to have a pelvic binder to close the book and to decrease the bleeding. The binder will decrease the diameter of the pelvis and this will minimize the bleeding. You give blood and fresh frozen plasma and platelets in a ratio of 1 to 1 to 1. If the patient has type one or type two lateral compression and he's not doing so well, then check head injury. That pelvic fracture will not cause major bleeding. This patient will not need a binder. There is no open book to close with the binder. So you need to check the orientation of the remai. So if it is transverse or oblique, so it's an internal rotation and it is a lateral compression. Check for head injury. If it is vertical, so it is external rotation. It is anteroposterior compression. Watch for bleeding. 
Lumbar transverse process fracture will indicate that there is vertical instability. That is a more serious injury. 90% of bleeding is cancellous bone or from the lumbar venous plexus. Major arterial bleed can occur in about 10% of pelvic fractures. The most common bleed comes from the superior gluteal artery. It may come from the obturator, which is common in lateral compression, or from the internal pudendal artery, which is close to the symphysis pubis. 20% of anteroposterior compression and vertical shear may need angiography and embolization, and only about 2% of lateral compression fractures of the pelvis will need angiography and embolization. The problem with the lateral compression fractures of the pelvis is head injury and not major bleed from the pelvis. For the unstable pelvic fracture, you need to restore the stability of the pelvis by doing anterior fixation, usually by a multi-hole non-locking plate, and posterior fixation, usually by percutaneous sacroiliac joint screws. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.